Hey, Time Slicers. Welcome to Slice Squad Spills. I'm your host, Nikki Wildflower. I went from a basement apartment to a multiple seven-figure empire. Now I'm here to share how you can do it too. Hello, and welcome to Slice Squad Spills. This is Nikki Wildflower, your host, and I'm here with my co-host and sister, Jackie. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah, we have a very exciting weekend. We are going to be going to, we're hosting a client appreciation event for our consultant clients, all Slice Strand certified artists. Uh, it's going to be a blast. There's going to be a lot of us and it's an all day business event. So I'm super pumped about it. Followed I by, hell yeah, followed by a two day Slice Strand certification there. So it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be wild. And Delora and I are doing a, a business and breathwork seminar too the next day or or mini retreat the next day. So we've done a lot. We've, we're busy, busy. It's Yeah, and it is really it. busy. Yeah. But I'm excited. I like that. So it'll be fun. I can't wait to see everybody. The sequins are falling off of my outfit. So I found gem glue. I was going to say, are you going to get a new outfit or... Because the, the event hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So luck, one of our consultant clients, I was doing her hair the other day and she was doing mine. And she brought in this sequence outfit. And she said, basically, and she's probably going to listen to this, like, I don't know who the fuck I thought I was buying this outfit, but I think it would look really cool on you. So, Oh, my gosh. That is my alternative outfit. Did you try it on? Yeah. And it, it, it looks good. It's a li- it doesn't exactly fit me 100% correctly. Like it's a little loose in some spots, but I think that I could totally make it work. But still, like I still want to wear the original outfit. I just don't know if it's going to happen. It might not last. Maybe you start in that one, do a quick change ski, and then we move on so that you're not shedding sequins the whole day. Just What's going to happen is that I'll be shedding sequins the whole time. So <laughs> right. there's... Exactly. It's like con- it's confetti, so it- it'll be good. Except I just fear that when the sequence is gone, it's going to be very see-through. A nude, just a nude cat suit. Basically. So I'm just essentially naked. I mean, you wouldn't even know if it- you wouldn't know it's not my skin. Right. So it's just going to be it- like by the end of the day, it's going to be me and skin. Just we should assess full- when you get here. We'll like just assess. assess the well, I can't yeah. try it on because the more I do, the more of the freaking things are going to fall off. But anyway, oh, that's God. neither here nor there. No we actually, there. we actually do have things to talk about today, and it really falls into let Let's backtrack for a moment. So you know who you're targeting now, based on the past episodes. You know, you know who you're attracting. You know how to attract those clients. So you've got the traffic, you've got the conversion. And now that you have clients, you have to learn how to retain them, or you are going to have this constant revolving door. And that's impossible to keep up with. So if you're constantly having to hustle to bring in as many new clients as you're losing, you're never like, it's just never going to stop. Especially when you are going into building a business and developing like a client base that you love to work with. And they're like, they respect your policies and they are your ideal client avatar. You're going to want to retain them and continue to work with them rather than having to introduce yourself to new people every single day, every single time that you work with someone. This isn't to say don't work with new clients, right? Nikki's spoken to that before. Like you should still take new clients and have space to do so to like elevate and grow, but you have to retain I don't know. I think a solid percentage of client retention, from my perspective anyway, is like 60% or higher. Yeah, absolutely. I So it's interesting because I realized that since I started doing slice strands that my client retention has been 100%, meaning mm-hmm. I have not lost one single client in a year. And because of that, I actually don't have space to take in anybody new. So I'm talking to somebody about this and I'm like, oh shit, I got to raise my prices. But that, but that does, I'm not just, yeah, but it was like, we'll get to the price increase. We'll we'll, we'll get to that later. And I honestly, I just, I think that the reason why my retention is so high, it's not specifically because I give a knockout, like customer service experience. That stuff is really important. And we are going to speak into that today. It's because I offer something that really nobody else does. And that's the ability to come in 
and get their get like a huge transformation and get the hair and the extensions that they want in a fraction of the time. And there's nobody that close to me that also does that as of right now. I'm training somebody, but I, <laughs> who's who's very who who is very close to me. But right now, you know, it's like there's a few of us here, and uh, where are they go? You know, where are they going to go? So I can do their color and extensions a fraction of the time. That they can't really get that elsewhere. So uh, they stay. My client retention's a hundred percent as well. And I raised my prices, but I I didn't lose any clients. <laughs> I raised them quite a bit, just like in a way that made sense. Um, it had been a bit of time, and it was definitely time to do so. Um, but I didn't I didn't lose any of my clients, so I'm okay with that. Like there's still growth there. Nobody else is really giving the experience that I give either, right? In my area, which is. I tap into like that ultimate client experience, but body work and like, I don't have like a luxury extension thing that I can do right with my massage clients. So I just try to give like a one of a kind experience every single time. I'm sure there are other very skilled massage therapists in the area who do that. But my clients just really, really enjoy the way that I deliver um, body work. And so I'm okay with not taking new clients because it's really just not what I do full time, right? Like that business is something that I just enjoy having, but I also deserve to make money for it. Right. And so it was time for a price increase. And I'm like, maybe it'll open up space for like one more new client. No, it didn't. But that's okay. I love the people I work with. I, I completely agree. So I think that there's a couple of factors here. Like the one of the reasons why we go so hard on being like, you got to figure out who you serve and what problem you solve is because if you are the problem solver of the thing, there's very little that makes very little competition. But there's another thing that goes into this. And I actually just went live on this in our Facebook group. For I actually went live in the wrong Facebook group, but that's fine. I meant to go live in our consulting group, Facebook group, but I went live in the extensions group and was talking about this, but it's still relevant. So it's whatever. I had an opportunity, which is a rarity for me. I had a spa day last week. Um, Mm -hmm. It was a birthday gift from Allison. And it's very hard for me to throw my phone into the abyss for four hours. And to be honest with you, I didn't. I actually like every between every service. I actually brought it with me and worked, which is we'll address that problem on a further episode or perhaps in therapy, but not today. I was going to say so, maybe therapy. <laughs> but anyways, so I, and I, I just had the chance to be an observer for the first time, an observer and a client and a consumer for the first time in a long time, because I don't go anywhere else to get my hair done. I'm not like an actual client anywhere where that's service related typically. And the one, and I have gotten a massage by one of our clients that was incredible. And that experience was awesome. This experience was going into a larger kind of spa that was extremely luxury. Like, you know, it was bougie. And I'm sure not inexpensive. Like, I'm sure very expensive, too. Yes. And but that's not my problem. It was a birthday present. So I walked in and I was like, naturally, because I can't shut my effing brain off. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great because now I get to take notes on like, what a real true luxury experience is from a consumer standpoint. So I walk in and I want you to know that I did end up having a great experience. So let me preface this by saying the practitioners that worked on me were great, but I noticed everything. And I think I was intentionally noticing everything. The first thing being like, I walked in there and there was just like, a lot of gossip going on. So like the people that were behind the front desk were talking about like, oh, it's been so slow. Do you think we should send out a 20, we should send out a 20% coupon? And they're just like, I walk in, they're just like, hey, Nikki. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, here's the intake form. You could sit there and somebody be out for you shortly. I'm like, okay, cool. So I take it, I sit down and um, they go right back to gossiping. And then, you know, like the guys walk in from other parts of the place and they're all chatting and I'm like, okay, yeah, not great. Honestly, like not great. I don't I don't particularly care. Like do you, but I'm I'm intentionally viewing this in a critical way. Because right. I thought it would help people that listen to this and our clients like really take a step back as a consumer. Right. Then, and I was texting you, I think. I'm like, I'm taking notes. Yeah, you were. You're like, yeah. <laughs> You're like I've got a lot of information incoming, right? <laughs> then then they do take me back to the spa. But I noticed that the back door was open to all the like junk and tchotchkes. Fine. But I noticed 
Secondly, I, I go into the locker room and I came out and they gave me water, which was nice. But it was like a Poland Spring water bottle, which nothing against Poland Spring, but you're expecting like, but do you think luxury when you think of a plastic or, water? Yeah. No. I'm like, you know, it could have been out of the sink, but if you put it in a glass, but but if you put it in a like glass thing and you put a freaking few cucumbers in it, I'm going to think it's like, I'm going to think the I'm being The most special pampered. water in the world. Right. Exactly. It's the, most, it's the most specialist. And then I go and I sit in this room and I'm waiting for, and I put my robe on, whatever. I'm sitting there and I go into this room and there's a coffee machine and there's a tea machine. And I'm just like, how nice would it have been if somebody asked? And, and it's like cheap tea and cheap coffee. And I'm not saying this to be bougie. I'm just saying like when... You, well, it's whatever you pay. For, you pay for a luxury experience. You expect luxury, so it's like cheap tea, right. like dollar store tea and dollar store coffee. And I'm going to make it myself. No, right. I mean, yes, I did actually make it myself. <laughs> I brought up the fact that like it was probably expensive because I know that your experience was like you enjoyed the actual services, but the actual like full on experience wasn't quite there and up to par with what it cost. Really. Correct. The right. Correct. So the exchange was a little uneven. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So then I go and I sit, I make myself tea and I sit down and I hear them all gossiping like, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, there's pizza. Did you want to eat pizza? And like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel well today. Then why'd you put yourself on the books? And I'm like, OK, yeah, no, like I definitely don't feel like I need to be hearing this. Also, am I about to get sick from one of you? Because I'm not into that either. <laughs> oh, no. So the reason why I'm even telling this story is because, and then I got, had my services and they were wonderful and the practitioners were wonderful and that totally turned it around. And I would never complain to begin with because I'm just not that way, but it was like an interesting thing. So I ask my, so I like to ask myself, like, when's the last time you went through your own services as a client? Like, what does that experience look like? And like, mm -hmm. yes, from a psychological perspective, right after you book somebody within those first 24 hours, they've already made their mind up pretty much if they're ever going to come back to you. Even like if their appointment is two weeks out, what happens after they book, right? How easy was that booking experience? How sharp did you look after? What did you send over? Have you been in contact with them since? How many mm -hmm. touch points are there? Let me ask you, Nick, would you, would you go back to that same space to? No. And no. you heard the people at the front desk talking about how slow they are. Do you think that that could have something to do with maybe maybe their marketing could use work, but that's not what we're talking about today, right? So do you think that that could partially have something to do with the fact that their retention might be quite low? Just yes. just in, I, I know that we don't know for, for sure. We don't have their numbers and data in front of us, but given your own experience. 100%. That is likely a big part of what's happening. The details matter. The details matter. It doesn't have to take you extra time, really extra money to give someone all of your attention, focus, and make it a special experience for them. We all want to be seen, heard, understood. We want space held for us. Make the appointment, whatever service you offer, it doesn't matter. Make the appointment meaningful for the person that you're with. Be present with them. Offer them water. See if they need to use the restroom. Maybe you and have not, tea. Again, not plastic. Doesn't water. have to be crazy expensive. No, not a plastic water bottle. Like get right. a get but a. But I one. was giving. <laughs> I was. I was giving people plastic water bottles before that, and I'm like, no. And now I'm like, no, I'm girl. Doing this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you learn. It was a learning experience too. It was, and, and of course, I'm like looking at it as a learning experience. So yeah, things like that, like how friendly I was greeted. And really everything in between I was noticing because of that, I, I figured I was getting a luxury experience. So interesting. And the other thing that I realized that most people don't do, and I used to not do this, I used to not like take notes on my clients and what's happening in their lives and their formulas and stuff like that. How nice do you think it is? People don't, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, do they care about you? Maybe, but who do they care about more? Them. Themselves. Yeah. Of everyone. course. Yeah. So how special do you think it makes them feel when you remember little details about their lives? When you remember what they got last time and you can build upon that or what you spoke about last time or any problem areas or anything like that, what was the consultation process like? And I also bring this up because in this same 
breath at the same spot. I'm really calling them out today. I. <laughs> it's okay. It's not like you said the name of the space. It's okay. I, I did not say the name of the space, and I and I won't. One of the other things that I had a facial for the first time, and oh my gosh, it was so nice and so relaxing. Here's what I think could have gone differently. So, and, and this kind of goes into a little bit of retail sales too, but. Now that we're talking about it, we'll talk about it. But so I so I go and I get a facial and I hadn't had one before. And she's like, have you had one before? I'm like, no. And then it was like, do you have any allergies? No. Do you have like sensitive skin? No. Okay. Dope. Oh, and another thing that happened too is that like you can't touch my legs because like one part of my leg because I have varicose veins and I did put that in my intake form and I it, that was not retained information. Uh. So I was like, so in the middle of my massage, I was like, ah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's just really sensitive. You can't touch that. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to massage over varicose veins. But anyway, yeah, but um, yeah, so th- th- that's a different story. But little things like that do matter. And so she's like, you have any allergies, whatever. So she starts doing my facial and she's like, okay, you have a breakout on your forehead. And I'm like, yeah, yes, I do. And she's like, is this because you do this, this and this at home? And I'm like, no, it's because my hair is greasy and it touches my forehead. And she's like, ah, okay, so here's what I recommend. And she starts going into like full techno babble. Like, here's what I recommend to combat this. So you can use this blah, 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 bleep, blah, 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 but a beep, 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 and it has this, 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 and this, and bada beep, beep, beep. And then at night, you just beep, 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 and ba boop, And I'm like, ah. And I'm like, great, here's the thing. I'm going to buy it because I want you to hit your retail numbers, for number one, but. If you would have like taken a moment to understand what's important to me, you would know that the least of my concerns is the fact that I have pimples on my forehead. So if in the beginning she took the time and said, hey, so are there any areas of your skin that you consider that that are really important to you that you consider problematic? And I would have said, well, I do like that look of like being poreless. (laughs) Like I like my makeup to lay on flat. I don't I try I try my best to keep wrinkles away. So if she really and and then she could have been like, oh, so what are you using for that right now? And I would have said, well, I use a primer and I get Botox and I do filler and whatever. And she would have been like, OK. And then are there any areas that you feel like you're not getting the results you want with that? And I would have been like, yeah, probably under my eyes. Boom. She could have probably sold me like a five hundred dollar serum. One hundred percent. But she did not take the time to sell what to, to understand what was important to me and sell my wants to me because if she did she would have known that I don't care about the pimples on my forehead I just it's very important to me that I look like an AI robot that's the thing it it does all come down to like being present and being skillful at holding space it's not about you for one hour for two hours however long the service is it is not about you You do not need to give unsolicited advice that they didn't ask for. Ask them what sort of advice they're looking for. Ask them what they loved about the last time they had a facial, a massage, or got their hair done, and what they didn't love. And then tailor the experience to the person. Make sure that they feel seen and heard. Repeat their words back to them. Okay, so I hear that last time you had a service like this, this didn't work very well, but this did. So today, my plan of action would be X, Y, and Z. How does that sound? What are your thoughts on that? Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Or yeah, but I also want to avoid X, Y, or Z. Like give them space. They are Ask paying questions. for your service. Ask them questions. Don't insert your opinion. Don't talk about yourself unless you get to a point like where you're having a conversation and it's appropriate. But make it about them first and pay attention and write it down. And then the next time they come in, when you have skillfully retained them as a client because you asked them to rebook and it was a no brainer because they really enjoyed that experience and they know they're not going to get that sort of service and attention anywhere else. They rebook. Next time you see them, like Nikki said, you've got the notes. Hey, last time you were here, um, this is what you were going through. I just wanted to check in about that. Has Yeah. Or has that improved or whatever? Those little things are so important. And they actually didn't even ask me to rebook. Whatever. I'm like, and I'm not the kind, like, if you don't ask me to rebook, I'll see you in like three years because I'm never coming back. 
<laughs> well, I've, I'm going to forget and I'm going to put yeah. it off because I hate making phone calls. Like that's yeah. the reality of the situation. You should always just schedule me in. I'll put it on my calendar and we'll call it good. Otherwise, it won't happen. I'm so, yeah. So it's got to be like a standing appointment for me or it doesn't happen. The other thing that I always tell people to ask about, I mean, besides obviously rebook, how do you even ask people to rebook? They're like, so I basically want to say something along the lines of like most people be like, did you want to book your next appointment? Oh, yeah. With their shoulders down and everything. Yeah. And it's like, just stand up, (laughs) just stand up and make a recommendation. And also that should have been discussed early on. So this might be something that the upkeep of needs to be every six to eight weeks or eight to 10 weeks. Is that in alignment with what you're willing to, the time that you're willing to put into this? It's a little different with different services, but like with, with hair extensions, you have to like set that standard. You have to make sure they understand. Right. So that I could say, okay, well, you know, so before you leave today, I'm going to go ahead and just book you into the next appointment to make sure that I have that, that space for you and that you can save that space in your books. Otherwise you're not going to get an, I I don't say this, but it's like, you know, otherwise I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to fit you in. So I want to make sure that I allot the appropriate amount of time for you. But most people just hunch over and say, did you want to book your next? One way that I would have done that if I were not a hair extensionist where it's like, okay, yeah, they have to come back in like eight to 10 weeks weeks or it's going to be over their ears. I would have probably, if it was something more like, what do you call it when it's like something that's more for like comfort and... Um. I don't know. Como se dice? Como se llama? Um, I don't know what word you're looking for. Like, like a not like a. It's not a necessity to go back in a certain time frame. So, like a pampering. It's, I guess. it's not, but it's not it either. If it's not required to book, let's just call it that. How would you? I'll. I'd like to say my speech and my spiel and the way that I go into it. But I'd love to hear how you'd say it if you didn't have to tell your client to rebook. Basically, if it was up to them. So I would say, how did you enjoy your service today? I'm really interested in your feedback. What did you love about it? Now, with that said, I would love to, you know, if if, if you loved it and you feel really happy with what we did today, I would love to reserve a spot for you to come back in six weeks. Would that be helpful? I don't know. I'm like so unsure. You You tell me what you would do. So there's like a couple of scenarios, but I guess I'll go into how I would speak to a new client. One, I keep it. This is important, actually. I keep a neutral tone when someone walks out of the room after I've provided them a service. I don't want to show up like, so how did you feel? Assuming that it was like the best experience of their life. I do assume that it was because I really paid attention on the intake. I listened. I I checked in during the session. Like I am assuming it was a great experience and that they would have spoken up when I when I checked in otherwise, but I still remain neutral. How do you feel? And then I get a response and they're typically like, amazing. The, did anything come up during the session different than usual? I like look for their feedback and I might recommend some movement meditation based off of what they tell me and like what we've kind of based the session off of. And then I will say something like, I really enjoyed working with you. I would love to see you again in four weeks or so. Did you want me to put that appointment in? But what if they say, you know, I, I don't know my schedule yet, so I'm going to call. I have a follow-up sequence, my friend. <laughs> so authentic follow-ups, right? So no worries. Not everyone's going to opt to pre-book and that's okay. And I didn't apply pressure, right? I said, I'd love to see you again in four weeks and I'd love to put that appointment on the books. Should I add it? No, I think I have to look at my schedule. Okay, no worries. Are you okay with me following up? You can ask if that feels better for you. Are you okay with me texting you in a couple of days to see how you're feeling? Maybe sending you over some resources to help you like extend um, or, or create longevity behind how great you're feeling right now. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So you can check in the next day, send them a resource, something specific to them, right? I do that all um, the time too. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then did you find a time that worked for you? I didn't see your booking come in. So I just wanted to check in. Did you find a time that worked for you? No, I forgot. Thank you so much. Guess what, Nikki, I'm sure you can resonate with this. As you said it before, like if I'm not pre-booking, I'm probably not booking. And it's not because I didn't love the service. I don't love you. I don't think it was amazing. It's because I forgot. I'm busy. I have ADHD. My brain is scattered. 
And if I don't put it in the books or my calendar, I'm never going to remember to book it. So touch points. If someone doesn't check in with me the next day and I hadn't pre-booked, I'm seriously not going to remember. It's nothing personal. I'm just not going to remember. But if they then reach out to me a month later, hey, I thought about you. How's everything going? I'd be like, oh my God, the massage therapist that I loved. I'm going to book right now. Exactly. No. But most, <laughs> yeah. but guess what? 99.5% of people don't do, do, not that. do that. And so what happens after they leave? Do you check in with them a few days later to see how they're loving it, how they're feeling? Do you send them helpful resources in between? Are you willing to do that? It's uncomfortable. Sure. What makes it so? Your mindset, because you're making it about you again, and it has nothing to do with you. Like if what you feel like you're genuinely providing value for somebody, there's nothing annoying about that. And if they think it's annoying and you're coming from a place of genuinely adding value, guess what? They could fuck off. Not everybody is for for you anyway. Right. But most people are going to be like, this is delightful. I've never had a hairstylist or massage therapist or an esthetician do this before. So like how nice is it? Resources and stuff. Yeah. And and like keep them on a sequence every like, so let's say like within the first three days after the experience. So probably two, like 48 hours, check in and see how they're feeling, stuff like that. Continue to send resources. Maybe like 30 days later, you send them a little, if you're a hairstylist, a tutorial. Um, If you're like an interesting article, if you're a massage therapist, just like make sure that you're coming from a valuable space, even like a podcast episode that you thought would relate to what they're currently going through. Mm -hmm. Add value. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Stay top of mind. Like if you have like a special promotion or something like that, that you want to share with them, that's valuable too. Like, hey, I know you like really enjoy it. I just wanted to let you know that I am uh, running this, whatever. Just make sure that you continue to follow up with people and you don't just let them off into the world. Like that's it. Go the extra mile. Because nobody else is. Yeah. Because oh, my market is... (laughs) Oh, my market is so saturated. No, your market is lazy as fuck. That's the reality. Take the extra step. Do the extra thing. I have no problem saying that because I am so on top of stuff like this. And mm-hmm. in all of my businesses, this is one of the things that has helped us grow the most is like just being so and it's something that has not it hasn't always been like this. It's something that like the skill of this and just like really making it about other people and not me is something that has developed over time. But I'm so good at this. And it makes me realize that just like so many people are just not willing to do it. Mm -mm. So when I say like, oh, people are like, who's your competition? I'm like, nobody, because nobody's willing to work even a fraction of as hard as I do. Mm -hmm. Or be as uncomfortable as I'm willing to be. Or like to try something, you know, the that discomfort, that fear of failure, rejection, like we all have it. Nikki has it. I have it. Everyone that you look up to, they have it too. Gary Vee has fear of rejection, I'm sure. I mean, but he, why do you think he's developed this sense of confidence? Because he continually tried, worked hard, put himself out there, did things that were uncomfortable. And now he's confident as shit. I'm sure he's still got limiting beliefs, dude, but like he's confident as shit because he knows who he is. He showed up for himself. He's bet on himself. He's connected with other humans. He works really hard and confidence comes from doing. You've got to do the things. Just do it. Just do it. And you know what? Yeah, confidence comes from doing what you say you are going to do. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is a fear. There's always going to be a fear of rejection. Do I have a fear of rejection? somewhat. I mean, nobody really likes being rejected. I don't care that much at this point, but like, I'm going to be totally brutally honest with our audience right now. There was a video about me on the internet the other day and this stuff happens. The more you put yourself out there, the more that happens. And it was just like slander and people were so mean. Like I, I blocked it. I'm like, I wish I didn't see that, but they're just like, she looks like she's artificial, artificial intelligence and, um, she's ugly and her work sucks. And uh, are her clients blind? And just like, and, and just like said, her voice drives me crazy. Like I can't even listen to her speak. She stresses me out. Like just the meanest things that you could ever think. And this is hairstylist, mind you, the meanest things that you could ever think that people would say about you. And like, I'm a human. Like I put myself out there and I always put myself out there with the best intentions. When I put myself out there and then something like that happens, it does hurt. So I want you to know that like I saw that. I wish I didn't. I don't need that in my life. I saw it. I wish I didn't. And I literally sobbed Mm. because it 
actually hurt me a lot. And not the part where they said I looked like AI because I was like, that's exactly what I'm going for. But I was like, little do they know that that's a compliment. They're like, she's been looking really fake lately. So I bet everything she does is just AI. I'm like, ooh, this is a nice conspiracy. I like this. You know, everything mean that you could say. And I cried. And um, at that day, I felt like I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like it felt really dark. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Like if this is what people think of me, then I don't want to do it. It's not true. I mean, it's not true. I have 100% client retention. Our consulting clients and our extension certification clients are super happy. And also half the things people were saying on there, I'm like, I've never, I've never spoken to you in my life. Like one girl was like, she did my hair and ruined it. I was like, you have never once been a client. You're like, I've never known you. (laughs) So it was really interesting and it did hurt and it, it wasn't, it wasn't truthful you know, it just the next day. So I was like, I'm going to let myself be sad about this because I choose to put myself out here. And if you choose to put yourself out there, you have to know that stuff like this is going to happen. And you don't make videos like that. You don't comment stuff like that. If you're in a good place and you're genuinely happy, I would never, I would never, ever do that to somebody, even if I hated them, because I'm happy and I'm fulfilled. And so I cried a lot. And then the next day, I was like, you know what? This hurts right now. I'm just going to let it hurt. But it's not going to hurt tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I woke up the next day and was like, I know exactly who the fuck I am. And I moved on. But I have to know that there are going to be days and seasons where I'm uncomfortable, where people say mean things about me. If you choose to be a business owner, you didn't choose the easy route. Congratulations. Most people choose the even people come into business. They still want the easy route. They still want the easy route and you didn't choose it. And guess what? You won't succeed if that's the route that you want. Mm -hmm. So you ready to go out there and get shit on? I am. I'm fine with it. (laughs) I will completely keep going out there and getting shit on. Well, the other thing, too, is that you do have a community of people who do support you and back you. And listen, everyone would have sprung to action if needed. The thing is, though, you should have been sad. That's really effed up. And I'm I'm sad for you and I'm frustrated because I think that people are keyboard warriors and they don't realize that their actions, there are repercussions, right? And sometimes it's not a personal repercussion to them, but like your actions, you can really hurt people just because you're typing and not saying it to that. Like, would you even say that? Would they say it to your face? No, they wouldn't. I mean, I if they said it to my face, I would definitely, I would smack, I think. <laughs> I, I don't think that I don't think I'm that mature that I'm not going to smack. But I was just like I, I responded to them in my head, not in person. I, right. not, I didn't say it. I'm not feeding that. No, I'm not feeding that. But I it. had a whole I had a whole rant. I punched a pillow a few times and was like, "This was what I would do to your face." Right. It's it's <laughs> fucked up. But like that's that's like besides the point. You do have a community of people. Like you are surrounded by people who are in a growth mindset as well, who support you, who love you, who who want to see you grow. There's not a like not everybody on the planet is going to be that person. What we can all do though, like those of us who did choose the not easy route, is lift each other up, support each other, share each other's work right? Like, let's be those entrepreneurs and those people in service industries that don't bully each other and lift each other up and network with the people around you just out of love. Because what do we do it for? If not, right? What's it all fucking for? Just show up, connect with the people. All we really have control over is the way that we show up, not other people's actions, not other people's words, just ourselves. So like, are you happy with the way you showed up yesterday? No. Okay. That's okay. Are you going to do some things that make you feel really happy about the way that you showed up today? I hope so. Don't fucking slander people on the internet. That's it. Yeah. I mean, listen, every, <laughs> everybody, who puts them, everybody who puts themselves out there in some kind of way and has some kind of a controversial idea, it's going to happen. I've always known that. I've always dealt with that. It's no big deal, but it's fucking mean, you guys. Like, just cut the shit. And, you know, I was with one of our clients when I saw it, and I was like... If you'll just excuse me for a moment. Mm -hmm. And I like went and I went to the bathroom and I'm like, okay, I'm good. I got this. I got this. And then I'm like, okay, so I. um, (sighs) Yeah, good. I'm glad you cried. I'm (laughs) glad you fucking cried it out. That sucks. And she was like, I would have never thought that you would cry over that. 
So it's kind of nice to see that you're human. And I'm like, um, I'm not, first of all. Second of all, yeah, no, this fucking the this fucking hurts, but just give me five minutes. I'm gonna pull it together. We're good. We're human beings. And it's okay. I don't to even feel. I hesitate to even put this here because I do not want anybody to give this the time of day. I'm gonna get it taken down anyway, because it's stupid. But no, it's okay. You know what? I think you're you're just being honest and sharing. And I think that that's powerful. There's power in, in vulnerability and sharing like just but your I don't think we should experience. give this particular any more time. Any more, no. Any more time and energy. Don't give them views. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Jeez. somebody in the comments was like, she's suing me. And I'm like, what? Wait, you're suing someone? No. I'm oh. like, <laughs> what? Holy hell. It is so funny like when when i just i'm like how could like how could people just like make shit up where did this all come from yeah i mean have you ever seen jojo siwa's comments it's fucking brutal and then i just think about like everybody who puts themselves out there even like in a grander way than i do like kim kardashian and alex formosi and like whatever sometimes we even say shit that's just like a little clickbaity so that people listen to it and it's controversial and yeah people just say i'm like this is not even like a fraction of what they see about that well you know they don't read it they probably don't read it and guess what like i just told myself i'm like i will never read some i will never read shit like this again like period i don't ever want to see this again like i don't want to see anything like that it's an immediate block (laughs) yeah fair enough that's it you're not going to bring down my vibrational frequency for long, <laughs> one day. Just, just one day to feel and then move on. But I resent that you took a day from me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Nobody got time to lose a whole day over here. I still I still did great work. but I know, you, know. you did. I know. I know. It was sad girl. Yeah. It was sad girl art, though. That's not. I like I like happy girl art. Sometimes that's passion um, art. So. <laughs> Anyway, this was about retention, but I just felt inclined to share and um, be nice. Show up in your life. Do the things. Be kind. Hold space for people. Show up with love. Show up in gratitude and love. It's more powerful than anything else that you could do in the world. That's yeah. It. And you look really insecure when you. It's embarrassing for you when you slander other people. It's embarrassing it's... for you. Look in the mirror, yeah. baby. Yeah, that's it. And so that, And so that's that. Thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, share. <laughs> oh. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Slice Squad Spills. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe, leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback is going to help us improve and attracts more listeners to the show. Please share with your fellow time slicers. And hey, if you're ready to optimize your time and double your income, we've got you covered. 